intermittent fasting is getting a lot of criticism recently. Why has Peter Atia and Rhonda Patrick, who are both famous doctors in the longevity space, changed their position on fasting? And how should we approach fasting based on the latest human research to optimize our health? We need to get this right because if we don't, it can take years off our lifespan. The interesting thing is that this criticism comes from doctors, whereas most regular people still say that they are getting benefits from intermittent fasting. The main criticism has to do with losing muscle, which in theory could be bad for your longevity because low muscle and strength are associated with a higher risk of mortality. I've been doing intermittent fasting for over 10 years and I'm going to address this criticism based on my own DEXA scans to see what this type of meal skipping has done to my body. But don't take my word for it, I'm also going to share with you the clinical trials that look at how intermittent fasting and meal skipping affects body composition and muscle mass. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Alright, so let's start with my own body composition journey over the last 10 years since I've been doing intermittent fasting. I started doing 16 and 8 intermittent fasting after high school and I continued doing it throughout my military service and university. Back then I weighed about 70 kilograms because I just got started with strength training and in the military I was forced to do a lot of endurance exercise which makes it harder to build muscle. Over these 10 years I've progressively built more muscle and strength while still doing some form of intermittent fasting. I usually have two protein meals per day and I've been lean at 84 kilograms at my heaviest. Right now I'm 78 kilograms because I've been doing more endurance exercise again to increase my VO2 max and I've lost a lot of body fat. I've done two DEXA scans over the last year and it's shown that I've lost 5% body fat and the best thing is that I've gained 0.2 kilograms of muscle in my arms and legs. My appendicular lean mass index which measures the amount of muscle in your arms and legs increased from 8.9 to 9.1 which puts me at the top 10% of my age group. My total body percentage as lean tissue is also 77.3% which is very high. The reason I'm sharing this is to show that intermittent fasting hasn't jeopardized my ability to build muscle or get stronger. I've progressively gotten stronger over time and built more muscle because of doing resistance training, which is the most important aspect of building muscle. It doesn't matter how many meals you eat, if you don't lift weights, you're not gonna build muscle. But I'm just an N equals one experiment. I could be a mutant or something like that. So let's look at the studies done on other people. In a 2016 study, eating food within an eight hour window and fasting 16 hours a day combined with resistance training in young healthy males was seen to maintain muscle, decrease fat mass, and improve health-related biomarkers. The intermittent fasting group lost more weight than the control group, but they maintained a similar amount of muscle and saw equal improvements in strength. Another 2017 trial found similar results. So both groups lost weight, but they didn't see a difference in muscle maintenance. A 2019 trial on women doing intermittent fasting showed that it didn't reduce the results from resistance training and both groups saw about 2-3% to increase in muscle mass after 8 weeks. And again, the innovative fasting group actually lost 2% body fat, whereas the control group without fasting gained 2% body fat. And again, equal gains for muscle, but the fasting group lost more fat. Now, you could say that th these studies were done on younger people so they can get away with it. They have more muscle, and they're not going to lose it that easily. With age, muscle mass decreases and the ability to trigger protein synthesis also appears to decline, which would mean that intermittent fasting makes it harder to maintain muscle for the elderly. Is this true? A 2024 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials on obese middle-aged and elderly people without metabolic disease found that intermittent fasting for two to six weeks reduced body weight, BMI, fat mass, and triglycerides more than the control diet without causing a significant loss of lean body mass. Now, in this study, they didn't control for the calorie intake so yes the fasting group tends to under eat calories but you saw that there was no difference in muscle loss either so if the theory is correct that the innovative fasting people tend to under eat calories which is why they typically lose more weight as well then you would actually see that they would lose more muscle than the control group because they eat less calories but that's not the case the muscle preservation is the same between the fasting group and the control diet so that actually favors the fasting group even more despite eating fewer calories the muscle maintenance is the same on the fasting group in theory in theory, intermittent fasting can make older people lose muscle because they might under eat protein or they're not able to stimulate enough protein synthesis during their eating window. However, the reality as shown by this meta-analysis of nine randomized controlled trials is different. I think people just worry too much about meal frequency. I need to make sure that I eat four times a day or something like that. But what they don't realize is that the biggest driver of muscle maintenance and muscle growth 
is resistance training and adequate protein intake for the entire day. The idea that you need to have four to five meals per day of protein has been debunked repeatedly. A recent 2023 study highlighted this. They found that a very large protein intake of 100 grams after exercise resulted in a larger and longer anabolic response than a low protein intake of 25 grams. There was a dose-dependent increase in plasma amino acid availability and a subsequent incorporation into muscle protein. The researchers found that plasma amino acid levels weren't different after five hours, but they were significantly higher in the 100 gram group after 12 hours. Now for the layman, it might make sense that 100 grams protein <laughs> results in greater protein synthesis, but the narrative has been for many years that your body can't utilize any more than 30 grams of protein in one sitting, which this study debunked completely. You can absorb all of it and your body will use it for up to 12 hours and longer. The way I'm doing intermittent fasting is I have a protein shake at noon that gives me 30 grams of protein and then after my workout, I eat about 100 grams of protein from foods. If I wanted to become a bodybuilder and build as much mass as possible then yes i would incorporate two to three more meals but i don't want to be a bodybuilder and as you can see i'm doing just fine with this type of approach i've got more muscle than 90 percent of people in all age groups because muscle mass peaks in your 30s so yes maintaining adequate muscle is important and if you are losing muscle on whatever diet you're doing whether that be regular calorie restriction a carnivore diet or a vegan diet then that's not really a good thing and you want to change it so how do you know if you have low muscle mass by doing a dexa scan and looking at your appendicular lean mass index which measures the amount of muscle in your arms and legs. Low muscle mass, also called sarcopenia, is categorized with an appendicular lean mass index of below 7 in men and below 5.5 in women. If you stay above the 50% line, you're safe. But ideally, you want to be at least in the upper quartile of your age group. So you don't need to have three to four meals to build muscle, but you do want to get the adequate amount of protein for the entire day. Yes, you don't want to eat all of the protein in just one meal. That's probably not the best way to go about it. And maybe two meals is already quite enough. So how much protein do you need then? For muscle and strength gain, the maximum benefits are observed at an intake of 0.8 pounds per day or 1.6 grams per kilogram per day. And that's based on lean body mass as shown by a 2018 meta-analysis of random control trials. You don't get more benefits by eating more than that, but if you eat slightly less, then you're leaving some gains on the table. Eating slightly less doesn't mean that you're going to lose the muscle either, as long as you're doing some resistance training. It doesn't matter if you eat this 1.6 grams per kilogram across six meals or in two meals. The effect is going to be relatively the same, as long as you get it in. Some people might struggle with hitting that amount because protein is very satiating, and innovative fasting itself imposes limits to how much food you can eat in one meal. The easy way to achieve this is to focus on the leaner protein sources like fish, meat, eggs, whey protein, and cottage cheese. If you're struggling with getting the optimal amount of protein, then you could easily add an extra protein snack or protein shake. The total amount of protein itself isn't actually that high. Remember that this 1.6 gram per kilogram recommendation is based on lean body mass, not total body mass. The average person tends to carry, you know, at least 15 to 20 percent body fat, so they don't need 1.6 grams per total body mass. They need it based on their lean body mass. For me, the 1.6 grams per kilogram of lean body mass is approximately 120 to 130 grams per day, which is much lower than I consumed in the past when I aimed for about 160 to 180 grams of protein. Between my two DEXA scans, I actually decreased my protein slightly by about 20 grams. And I didn't lose muscle. I actually built 0.2 kilograms of muscle in my arms and legs, which is a massive win, given the fact that I was in a calorie deficit while losing body fat and while eating slightly less protein. So this just highlights the importance of doing exercise. Now to know how much lean body mass you have you would need to do the DEXA scan to know okay what is my 1.6 gram per kilogram of lean body mass but if you're not willing or able to do the DEXA scan then I would just use okay I'm gonna aim for 1.4 grams per kilogram of total body weight. That's going to subtract about the 10 to 20 percent body fat that most people have. So overall, innovative fasting can make you lose muscle only if you're under eating protein or if you're not doing resistance training or if you're in a very severe calorie deficit. But being in a calorie deficit will typically make you lose muscle no matter what diet you are or no matter how many meals you eat. Now, there are some caveats to this. Yes, if you're 80 years old or older, you probably want to have three to four protein meals per day to make sure that you absolutely get your protein demand because the consequences of not doing so could be harmful. Number two, if you're losing muscle and you're seeing that in your DEXA scan, 
then maybe you need to add an additional meal. You shouldn't be dogmatic, but you shouldn't be dogmatic about intermittent fasting causing muscle loss either, because the research doesn't support that at all. Number three, any form of weight loss in the absence of resistance training will result in muscle loss, whether you're eating two meals or five meals. Weight loss is inherently catabolic. A 2022 study compared the effects of continuous calorie restriction, 20% deficit, combined with resistance training and a 5-2 intermittent fasting. When you have a 70% calorie deficit two days a week and you eat normal calories at the other days, both diets were combined with resistance training for 12 weeks and they saw no significant differences in body composition, muscle quality and muscle strength. That's because both groups ate over 1.4 grams per kilogram per day of protein, which is over 0.7 grams per pound per day. So if protein intake and resistance training are the same, a smaller eating frequency will not inherently result in muscle loss. That's why you should always do resistance training, whether or not you're doing intermittent fasting. Resistance training is the biggest reason you build muscle in the first place, and it's the biggest reason you maintain it independent of your meal frequency. So if anything, then it should mean that everyone should do some form of resistance training to counteract age-related muscle loss. Now, the other criticism that people have about intermittent fasting is that, you know, you might be lean, you might have muscle, but your blood work or inner health is still messed up. Well, I've shared my blood work repeatedly on the channel, so you can check it out. I'm not going to go into the detail in this video, but my blood work is great. Everything is in the normal range. There's also several meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials showing that intermittent fasting helps to lower risk factors of cardiovascular disease, such as LDL cholesterol, blood glucose, inflammation, waist circumference, blood pressure, triglycerides, and fasting insulin. So overall, if you like doing intermittent fasting and you're seeing improvements in your body composition and blood markers, you know, then keep doing it. I agree that you do want to get enough protein, which the upper limit is 1.6 grams per kilogram of lean body mass, or something like 1.4 grams per kilogram of total body mass. But fasting itself isn't going to make you lose muscle, as shown by many clinical trials. You definitely should do resistance training to stay off any risk, because even if you're not doing intermittent fasting, you're at risk of losing muscle without doing resistance training. If you want to learn more about the research of intermittent fasting and the other things related to longevity, including over 70 biomarkers, then check out my book, The Longevity Leap. Link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe to future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Steve. Stay optimized, stay empowered.